Chairman, the Justice for Maglin Survivor Advocacy Group has asked for a dignified debate to take place in the Chamber this evening, tomorrow evening, in relation to this uh, motion. Um, it's in my view no less than we can do for uh, these remarkable individuals who themselves have enormous grace and dignity in terms of how they're dealing with this issue, in terms of how they have progressed this uh, and have stayed with it down through the years. Uh, it is without doubt one of the most shameful and distressing periods in our country's short history. Um, it defies belief and it must be extremely upsetting for the people concerned and indeed their families to think of the abuse, the torture, uh, the neglect, the societal stigma, uh, being shunned away from you know, the norms of society, being pushed into these places that were never intended to be, uh, you know, uh, they were never jails, they were never there in court orders, they were there against their will, they were put in there, kept out of the way. Uh, and to think that the people behind that acted in the name of God or Jesus Christ uh, or clerics of any description uh, further compounds the sense of disbelief about that. Uh, and I said this in Chana there, and I believe this is our own Holocaust, because I think what was inflicted on these uh, people was absolutely atrocious, and there's no other way of describing that. Uh, and as Deputy Butler points out, the last law on journey closed in 1996. It's not a million years ago. Uh, we have a lot of debate in this chamber and outside of it in recent uh, in current times and in weeks to come in relation to the children's rights referendum. Uh, and yet still in recent weeks we had a senior cleric in Galway uh, who had the temerity to say that he thought paedophilia was a step of friendship gone too far. I mean that's the context in which we should remember uh, those who uh, occupied uh, positions of trust and respect in our society and those in particular who hid behind religion, the people who mocked it most and hid behind that to inflict this kind of misery on people. It is absolutely shameful, and I sincerely hope that these people, uh, and I'm sure there are many of them who are around there, can hang their heads in shame to know they've gone through this life and inflicted that misery on others while engaging in rank hypocrisy. It is absolutely disgraceful. Many of the victims, or the survivors, as has quite rightly been termed, never got to see their own family after they were incarcerated. Uh, they were effectively taken for slave labour purposes. They were walked to the bone, walked 10 hours a day some, six days a week, uh, completely cut off from what happened outside of these institutions. Uh, whatever about the uh, initial you know, trauma attached to being brought from your community, from your home, put into these places, I think that you were then used uh, in terms of slave labour uh, to provide uh, you know, free labour for capitalists, again, that hid behind, that hid behind the name of religion uh, just for profiteering. Um, it, it makes the blood boil. For many of the survivors, Chairman, while they may no longer be physically incarcerated within the institutions, they have continued to feel forgotten and abandoned, both in the past and in the present. Now, compounding that sense of uh, stigma and that sense of uh, exploitation has been the lack of political conviction displayed by successive administrations. And I think in terms of bringing the element of dignity to this debate, we must acknowledge that only less than three weeks after this government was formed, Minister Shatter said about creating the interdepartmental group, and Minister Lynch, who has worked fraudulently on this issue, in opposition, as she is now doing in government, and that deserves, I believe, uh, to be acknowledged by those who put the motion down this evening. I do hope that the very fine and eloquent contribution of Minister Lynch in explaining the amendment isn't lost by those and I, I sincerely hope this, and I'm trying to be as constrained as I can, I sincerely hope those who put down this amendment will always practice what they preach when it comes to the misery that has been inflicted on these people and in other sectors of what has happened in this country in recent years. One of the victims who spoke out about her experience in the laundry said, and I quote, those places were the Irish school likes for women. When you went inside their doors, you left behind your dignity, identity, and humanity. We were locked up, had no outside contacts, and got no wages, although we worked 10 hours a day, six days a week, 52 weeks a year. What else is that but slavery? And to think that we were doing all of this in the name of a loving God. Further evidence of state complicity in the grave injustices visited upon the victims is contained in a report by the Irish Human Rights Council into Maglins, which was published about two years ago. And it went on to say, that the treatment of these women and girls by the religious orders appears to have been harsh. They were reputedly forced to work long hours, 
Their names were often changed to a religious name. They were isolated from society, and the girls were allegedly denied educational opportunities. The then Minister for Education and Science told the Oireachtas in 2001 that this treatment was abuse, that it involved an appalling breach of trust, and that the victims suffered and continued to suffer. Within a few short months, this government created the Interdepartmental Committee, independently chaired by Senator McAleese, and the advocacy group have recognised the important work that Senator McAleese has carried out in this area. And for reasons that were given by Minister Lynch, given the volume of work that the committee have had to deal with, naturally enough he has sought an extension of time to deal with. Um, but I believe, far from this being a fig leaf, this is a genuine constructive attempt by this administration to deal with the appalling injustices in relation to the Magdalene laundries. And I have no doubt that in the fullness of time uh, that these women will get the justice that they deserve. And I do hope that we can return to this issue in the fullness of time and acknowledge that in the floor of this House. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Deputy. I now call upon Deputy Niall Collins.